The following program is paid for by the friends and partners of City Church Ministries. Welcome to City Life TV. We're so glad that you've taken the time to join us today. I truly believe that we have a wonderful program lined up for you. All throughout this night, we have people waiting to talk with you, pray with you. If you have a prayer request, whatever may be going on in your life, we here at City Life TV have a door open for you so that someone can pray with you. Call us at 504-246-5121. And certainly someone is here for you. You know, uh, now that I'm the, the proud papa of three children, I think about all the different times that we have had to uh, try to feed a, a family now of five. And uh, sometimes when we gather at the, at the family table, um, we start eating and some of our children aren't quite hungry enough. And so we'll watch them and they piddle around in the plate. We realize that uh, there's a reason why they're not hungry it's because they're filled up with something else and you know that's what jesus promised us that blessed are those who are hungry for they shall be filled with the right kind of nutrition and so we're going to talk tonight on this program about the importance of spiritual hunger spiritual hunger blessed are those who want more either we're filled with the things of this world or we're filled up with the things of god I pray tonight that as you watch our service and me speaking on blessed are those who are hungry, that you too will be filled with all of the right things that God has for your life. Now let's stop and go into the service. And today I want to talk to you about hunger meeting hunger and the connections that take place. I was reading last night, just going over my notes and just preparing for today. And of course, I read the Bible through every year, try to read it at least, at least once through the whole year, sometimes twice the Bible through a year. If you've never done that, you're missing something. Man shall not live by what? Bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It's amazing how so many people are connected to the newspaper, uh, but they're not uh, daily partakers of the word of God. You gotta make it a habit. It's amazing how you didn't like green beans or spinach when you were a kid, but as you got older and you acquired a taste for things that are more nutritious, that's how the word of God is. You, you begin to, to make place and room for a new kind of taste bud and uh, appetite, you know, uh, uh, appetite. So, the word of God is, is, is important. So as I was reading last night, uh, I never really wasn't planning on talking about this, but I do want, saw some revelation in this chapter, Luke 15, about hunger meeting hunger, and I wanna, just wanna share it with you this morning. You know the story. Uh, we, we, we speak on it at every, at every uh, encounter, but it's found in verse 11 of chapter 15. It's the, the story of the prodigal son or the lost son. And, and I, want you to, I want you to understand a few things here. So let's just read to um, Luke chapter 15, verse 11. I still hear pages turning. How many are here today? Say amen. amen. It says, to illustrate the point further, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Jesus told them the story. A man had two sons. The younger, bro the younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land, and there he wasted all his money in wild living. 
Verse 14, but about the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. He was hungry. He persuaded a, 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 a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into the field to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the figs looked, the, the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. The world doesn't have anything to offer. Amen. Now, to me, as I look at this, this story, most people begin to have sympathy for the younger brother. I believe the younger brother is in a better state than the elder brother. Now, let's just, let's just read verse 17. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. Now, we know the, elder, the youngest brother is in the world. He has decided to leave the confines of his father's mansion, representing that he had gone away from God. And we understand today in our city, our nation, in our, in our neighborhoods, that there are people around us that are, that are starving, they're hungry. I mean, as I left this morning, I, I looked to see how many cars were parked in the parking, in, in the driveway around my neighborhood. Out of, out of, out of all of the 10 homes on our, 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 our block, I, I kind of figured about maybe two or three of us, four of us, and most three of us go to the one church, uh, we're, we're headed one way. Some brother was outside washing his house, and he's washing his car, and, and we, can, we can look at that and we say, you know, well, you know, I'm just, I'm just oh, Lord, you know, do your work. You know, they just don't want to listen. And, and, and that's what the church, that's the problem. The, the problem is not with the people in the world. The, the problem that we have is the people that are in the pews. And so, he, look, look at the verse, it says he came to himself when he got hungry. When he, when he was hungry, he became, he, he became aware there was something that was missing in his life. Now, verse, verse 18, I will go home, he says, to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. So he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming, filled with love and compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am now no longer worthy of being called your son son. But his father said to the servant, quick, bring the finest robe in the house, put it on him, get a ring, put sandals on his feet, and kill the calf. We have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found, so let the party begin. Amen. Meanwhile, the older brother, the older son, was in the fields. He was working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house. And he asked one of the servants, what's going on? Your brother is back, they said. Your father has killed the fatted calf. We are celebrating because of his safe return. The older brother was angry. Now, he said, and wouldn't even go in the house. His father came out and begged him, but he replied, all these years I have slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to do. And in all that time, you never gave me even one goat for a feast for my friends. Yet when this son of yours, not my brother, but your, this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by giving him the fatted calf. His father said to him, look, dear son, you have always stayed by me, and everything I have is yours. 
We had to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. The problem that we have here is that the elder brother was not hungry enough to get anything that the father wanted to give him. Now, the, the, the younger brother, and this is amazing because as we fast, the, the importance of fasting, how it's connected, how it's connected to us, and there are really, really three keys the things that are open up to us, and I just, you know, in this first service, it's so much, for the, for the sake of time, I, I want to develop a little bit more, but I just want you to get a hold of this today and, and answer the question, is that, where are you? Where, where are you? You say, well, you say, well, I'm, I, I, maybe I, you know, I, I'm kind of confused. I want to be like the, little, the, the younger brother who's, who's hungry, but the older brother, he never leaves the house. Well, the, the, the thing about it is, is that it doesn't really matter Really, if you're close in geography to the, to the house, it's really about where your heart is. And the heart of the younger brother, because he began to, you know, he said, well, he's fasting. Well, he had to fast, because why? He got so desperate, he didn't have anything. And that is what caused him to, to, to come to himself and to say, if I can just go back to my father's house, if I can just get back. See, it's not until we become hungry you become desirous, and, and you, you get to that place where, God, I want to see something in my life I've never seen before. I want to I wanna, I wanna experience more of you. You gave me my inheritance before. You, you gave me all the things that I have right now, but I'm not satisfied with that. It wasn't until he got hungry, he got thirsty, he became desirous of something more that the, he got to his senses and he came back to the father, and believe it or not, the father gave him more the second time around than what he gave him in the first. See, a lot of times as believers, well, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, I'm on my way to heaven, what more is there? Oh, believe me, hear me out, there's a whole lot more. The worst thing you can allow yourself to do is to become satisfied, take your heels and stick them in the mud and say, this is where I want to be, this is where I want to stay, this is where I'm, I'm just, hey, pastor, give me a good little word and help me out a little bit and just keep me and pat me on the back. No, the elder brother stayed in the church, stayed at home, thought he was doing all that good, but the Bible says that he never tasted of the things of the kingdom of God because he was filled already. And you can't, you see, the, 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 the hunger, the hunger of our Father, God, is greater than any hunger that we have ever known. Our Father, God, is so hungry to pour out his anointing. He's so hungry to pour out his resources. He is so desirous to pour out all the things that he has desired for us. I was reading last night where the Bible says, and Jesus said, if your fathers in the earth know how to give good gifts, how much greater does your heavenly father know how to give good gifts? He gives to those who ask for it. Jesus said, you have not because you ask not. You don't find because you never seek. You never receive because you're not persistent. And what happened to the younger brother is that he became so hungry that he got persistent. He didn't care if he ever tasted filet mignon again. All he wanted to do was to get back to the father's house. He wanted to experience what it was like to have the joy, unspeakable joy, and full of his glory. But my friend, if you're filled up with the things of this world, you're filled up with religion, you're filled up with things in your own status quo, your ritual, you'll never experience what the younger brother experienced. As a matter of fact, the younger brother experienced the greater part. The older brother didn't want to go in. And when the younger brother came home, because he's hungry now, See, the question is today, how hungry are you? How hungry are you? When there's hunger, three things will be released into your life. 
And I want to give this to you real quickly, and that hopefully we can develop even more. Number one, when there's hunger for spiritual change, God will release to you his plan for your life. Now I'll develop it more. Secondly, God will release into your life the provision that you need to sustain the plan and the purpose for your life. And not only will he re re release to you the plan, the provision, but he will also release into your life the power to sustain you to fulfill all of the things that he has called you to do. There's a, there's a verse of scripture I want us to look today in the book of Acts chapter 10 because I don't believe any verse that's more powerful than this in regards to hunger. Now, hunger attracts hunger. Now, I want you to read, read with me because this is an incredible, incredible story. I can't read all of it for the sake of time, but I want you to get those things in you. God will reveal the plan into your life. He will read. He will release into your life the provision, and he will release to you the power, the power. Now, now, this is an incredible story because giving you a backdrop, up until this, in Acts chapter 1 through Acts chapter 9, there has not been one Gentile yet saved. Now, this is important to us because, in case you didn't know it, all of us here are Gentile. Whether we're white, black, brown, yellow, we're Gentile, we're non-Jewish. Up until this time, up until this time, the only people that were being saved on the planet were those who are of the Jewish nation. Now, you have to just get this today. Remember, hunger connects to hunger. And because of hunger, it releases the plan, the provision, and the power. Now, read this. In Caesarea, verse 1, there lived a Roman army officer named Cornelius, who was a captain of the Italian regiment. He was the, a devout, God-fearing man and was everyone in his household. He gave generously to the poor and prayed. Now, prayer, prayer and fasting, connections, how hunger attracts hunger. He prayed regularly to God. One afternoon, about three o'clock, he had a vision in which he saw an angel of God coming toward him. Cornelius, the angel said. Cornelius stared at him in terror. What is it, sir? The angel replied, your prayers and gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. Now send some men to Joppa, a summon a man named Simon Peter, he is staying with Simon, a tanner who lives near the seashore. Now understand this, Cornelius is hungry. He's thirsting after God. He is a Gentile. He is somebody that has been locked out from the things of God. He has been, he has been banished. He, he, he's, but despite, despite the fact that he is Italian and he's, he's, he's um, he, he's, he's not allowed to worship God like the God of the Jews. He's thirsting, he's hungering, he's desiring, he wants more of God, but he doesn't know how to get it. We can say that he is a man that's hungry. How hungry are you today? We can see ourselves in both, see ourselves in, 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 in Cornelius, and we can also see ourselves in Peter. But look what he says here. The verse says, and the angel replied, replied to him, verse 5, now send men to Joppa, summon a man named Simon Peter. He is staying with Simon, a tanner who lives near the seashore. You have to understand, these men are 30 miles apart. They're right in the same neighborhood, so to say. One's living in Kinner, one's living in Chalmette. They're just, they're, 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 they're so close, they're connected. They don't really realize how close they are, but the problem is, is that one is on a different track than the other. Now we're talking about how fasting and how prayer helps to bring the connection, the hunger factor here. The hunger, this Italian man, he's a soldier. 
He's in the opposite. Look, we, can, we can say that this man is on the other side of the tracks. But look what he says here, the verse, verse 9. Next, next day, verse 9, as Cornelius' messengers were nearing the town, Peter went up on the flat roof to pray. And it was about noon, and he was what? He was what? Hungry. He was what? Hungry. And he was what? Hungry. Boy, you're weak this morning. And he was what? Hungry. See, if Peter had not been hungry, you may think he was hungry for fried chicken from Popeye's. You may, you may, you may think that he was hungry for uh, some steak. But the word says that he, 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 he left the, the food Somebody else went to prepare food, and Peter was hungry. Who was hungry? Cornelius was hungry, but Peter was hungry. See, we want to see miracles. We, we want to see, that's what this, this whole series is about. We want to see miracles, signs, and wonders. I wish, I wish today I could talk to you about a few things of miracles, of provision that have taken place even this week. But if I did, you'd get jealous and you may not pay your tithe anymore. But the, the miracles that are being released right now because of the hunger that you are going through during this fasting, during this time of prayer, God is working mysteriously. He's working He's working when we're sleeping. He's working when we're working in our, 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 our yards. He's, he's, something's happening, I'm telling you. Something's happening right now. Something's being released. The connection, the hunger is connecting. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many believe it today? Hunger attracts hunger. Hunger attracts hunger. I'm always really saddened. A few years ago, Dad and I were at a church preaching, not by invitation, we just happened to be there. Circumstances, circumstances sometimes will put you some places, not because you desire it, but just because things happen and you wind up there. We were talking to the pastor, and the pastor relayed to me and Dad that they hadn't had someone saved in their church in five years. Now, we, we, can, we can talk about, well, maybe they need to change the sound system out. Or maybe they need to get a new pulpit. Maybe they need a new, new pastor. I don't know. I wouldn't say that. I'll leave somebody else say that. But uh, maybe they need to go on radio. Maybe they go on television. Maybe they need to do more um, the external things that we come to know about what's related to church growth. But I see it as the name, number one thing that was missing was hunger. Hunger. See, you, you, can't, you can't get filled until you're hungry. Hunger. Say it out loud, hunger. hunger. It's to the point of where, you know, this week, I've been doing okay. I'm going to look, do a little confession. I didn't break my fast like boom. But the 10-day the, 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 the fast with the soup and salad was a lot easier for me than this one meal a day thing. I'm thinking about changing that. But as I medit was meditating upon the fact that there was possibly could be some food rained down, the Lord spoke something to me and said to tell this to City Church, that the hunger factor that you are hungering for food is matching the hunger for his spiritual things. Come on, give God praise this morning. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you 
shall betray me. Which one of us can it be? Who is the traitor? He says that even among us, the Chosen Twelve, there is a traitor. And now he speaks of a betrayal before night's end. Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? And one of our numbers be so blind? Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? It's unthinkable. Who could it be? Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? Why should one of us do such a thing? Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? I find it so hard to believe that one of us will betray the Lord and one of God. Surely the betrayer is out of his mind. He refuses to make a move. Well, I've made one. The day that changed the world. A City Church Theatrical Performance, Easter Sunday, 11 a.m. Well, if you've ever tried to get a child to, to uh, eat and they're not hungry, that's a very difficult task. And it's probably because they're filled with the wrong kinds of things. And that's what fasting does. Fasting allows us, in a natural, but it's a spiritual principle as well, to, that hunger uh, causes us to desire uh, to be filled. Uh, but the great thing is, is that we're not going to be filled with this world or uh, the entertainment or uh, the things that are passing away, but with those things that come from heaven. And that's what I pray that you receive tonight as you watched us here on City Life TV, that you are filled with the blessings of God. Father, we thank you tonight for this broadcast. We thank you for all those who have tuned in. We know today that if we're hungry or thirsty, you said, Take no doubt, no thought, because you will fill us with the things that we need. We pray tonight that it will be faith will arise that we can receive all of your promises. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray tonight that you will hunger and thirst, for Jesus said you will be filled. Come and see us here at City Church. We have two great services this Sunday. Our services begin at 9 and 11 a.m. We're located at 13123 I-10 Service Road. And I'll tell you what, the power of God and the presence of the Lord is evident in every service. You know what? We'd like to meet you after every service we meet and greet. So if you've been thinking about it, why think about it any longer? Just go ahead and do it. I pray that your life will be filled with the blessings of God today. It's been awesome to be with you, and I pray that God will fill you up, overflowing. But until next time, from us here at City Life TV, have a blessed day. The proceeding is paid for by the friends and partners of City Church Ministries. We're available 24 hours a day online at citychurchno.com. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter there you can share your prayer requests, find out more about our resources, and partner with us as we share the love of Christ around the globe. And if you're in the New Orleans area, join us for services on Sundays at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock a.m. Our address is 13123 I-10 Service Road in New Orleans. You mean more to City Church Ministries than you may ever know. We appreciate you, and we thank our friends and partners for making this program possible.